I think maybe maybe next month. Okay, it's in Maricopa County, and in the, and then of course wherever there are Native Americans, mm -hmm. or wherever Native it is, American places are badly affected. There are camps for prisoners for immigration prisoners. <clears throat> oh wow! So and in prison. So it's spreading really bad in those places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a shame. Well, okay. so I guess I'll actually on that topic, we, we, we can go over a topic real quick to kind of like change the um, change the topic a little bit from all this. And um, I was reading, um, I was reading oh, Victor's afterlife. Sorry, can I ask you? I'm sorry. What's question? that? Who's talking? I was gonna, Cyrus. I have a question for you. Just okay. Michael, I got Michael. Um, do you think this is something that was kind of brought to me in a various few forms that there's some sort of melting going on between, say, the earth realm and the spiritual realm? Ooh. Like they're kind of merging? That's a good question. I almost because there's weird shit that I've never experienced happening. Yeah, ever. I that, that, that is a really cool, very interesting subject I, I want to talk about. I might even wait till Barbara gets back because I don't want to. I'm right here. I'm just, I have to tend to the cat from now. Uh, from time I, to I was just saying, <laughs> Michael was asking if he thinks that there's like a merging between like the, an astral or spiritual world and this world. And so I wanted to address that, you know, um, talk about. Because I consider this a realm. Like I never say it's a world or a planet. I consider yeah. this a realm or a dimensional frequency. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll look go at in my thoughts and you guys can tell me what you think. So I, I've been hearing from a lot of different sources about that concept happening and there's different symptoms of that happening. One is, like if you, ask, if you do astral projection and you'll notice, I don't, know if, I don't know, Barbara, if you ever notice this because you have a lot of communications on that side. Uh, people's personalities. Your audio is going, sorry, it's a little yeah. bit. I, I, I think it's my Wi-Fi connection going. I'm going to turn off. No, my... no, you're fine now. Okay. So what I was saying was, video as well. What I was saying was, um, you know, those those different people who have mentioned symptoms of that happening. And I was going to ask Barbara because I know you have a lot of communication. Do you find that people's personalities on like on the you know, quote other side are amplified? Uh, somewhat, but they're certainly not diminished. Yeah, it's not diminished. Like in, in my experience, there, there, there's like a high level of amplification, mm -hmm. like in a weird way, if someone here is like intoxicated, but it's different than that. It's like, because when you're intoxicated, like a lot of your inhibitions go out. And I've noticed um, like in the astral projection type of environments, people, people's personalities tend to be much more, a little, a little bit more, Maybe closer to who, who and what they really are, but that can also manifest as being, you know, having a much higher amount of energy and like really, yes, you know, really expressing all of their personality on like a on, on like compared to here is level two and they're like level ten, and so sometimes it's almost even a little bit overwhelming because like if I had an interaction with my mom. It's like my, it's, it's, it's my mom, but you know, she's like sped up to such a, you know, personality is like on fire. It's all over the place as opposed to here where she might be a lot more, she might've been a lot more like subdued or mellow or whatever, because, you know, I think the pains and, um, hassles of the earth body, you know, we just, we're not, we're not on all four cylinders, I suppose. But anyway, so what I've been hearing about is like, this idea that there is this shit, there's this merging between this world and the other side, which will result in increased telepathy between people, <clears throat> increased um, paranormal experiences, but more, most importantly, like people's personalities changing or, you know, stuff that's inside coming to the surface, coming to the outside. So, you know, I've, I've done a couple of coachings with people who have told me that they're having issues where for one thing, it's like all the stuff that's inside of them is coming out to the surface. So if you have like unresolved problems inside, it's all coming out. And on the flip side, it's happening to all the people around them. And so like this one lady was telling me that for all her family, her friends, her neighbors are acting like crazy. And he, she's never seen it before. They're acting manic and like out of their minds. And what I was, 
you know, when I was reading about this months or years ago, that was one of the symptoms is that whatever is inside of you, it's going to start coming out to the surface. So you're going to see people, people who are happier or people who are on a more positive spin are going to be even more positive, and even more happier. But people who are maybe are on, a, on, you know, on the flip side, on a, on a darker spectrum are going to be even, even crazier or whatever it is, like whatever is, whatever is hiding inside come, is coming out to the surface. And then you combine that with increased paranormal activity and increased telepathy among people. And if you know you keep going along that path, the idea is that, you know, you know this planet, if you want to use like law of one re reference points, the idea being, okay, like we are um, third density, you know, and then you move it up to 3.1 density, 3.2 Yeah, density. see, that's what I'm saying. It seems like there's some sort of uh, mishmash happening. Things are happening that I've never experienced that are very bizarre. I don't. Have you ever spoken on the Mandela effect? Have you ever spoken on that? Yeah, I did because there's the one Mandela effect that I experienced that you know about the James Bond film, you know, and this really oh with the braces. Yeah, it really changed my mind about that. I used to be a skeptic about Mandela effect, and then so you remember it really strong with the braces. Very strong. Even comments. Yes, me too. Me too. It's like an absolute. That was the whole point of the joke. Yeah, that was the whole point. Like now, now literally that whole scene doesn't even make doesn't any make sense. sense. It's and then, yeah. you know, then they they interviewed like I think the actress is an you know, older lady now, but she was saying that that was in the original script was that she was supposed to have braces, and then they cut it out at the last minute, and you know it kind of messed up the film. Yeah, and it's are you are we dealing with some alternate version of that person who like smushed into this well, dimension? Yeah, what it's seems really to be strange. Happening, this is what I've heard about in the more like, esoteric community, stuff that I don't always talk about because, you know, I, I try to stay grounded in evidence and I don't I always have the evidence to support some, you know, something some channeler says. But, you know, what, what I'm hearing about is that all these different timelines are collapsing together. Yeah, it does seem like something like the that is happening. The reason the timelines are collapsing together is because there's some kind of an inevitability that we're leading. That that that, that like some be, zero. What was it called? The zero point energy or something like that. We're hitting. I don't know the, about that, but there, there's like an inevitability of um, things that are supposed to happen in the world, right? Um, no, but there's. It's like it's like we have a spectrum and it's very wide and like a bunch of I guess what you would consider you. You're familiar with Taurus fields around the heart and all that stuff, or no? Yeah. All right. So it's like the Taurus fields. Let's say that's this big, and you have. Let's say you have one for each chakra or anything. Whether you believe in chakras or not, I'm just using this as a metaphor. So you know, you have a Taurus field here, a Taurus field there, a Taurus field there, and so let's let's apply that then to say multiple layers like you said 3.1 3.2 this hub vibration this vibration each having its own field in which uh people who resonate with that field being your vibration your your positivity or negativity your service to self or service to others you know there's many ways we could put this would resonate towards that it seems like they're kind of uh, being put in a what's the thing where they've make like bread and they just like make a smushed sandwich. It seems like it's like being smushed. Yeah, it does. Uh, that's, um, and it's, it's like something is raising up on a small scale. So if you could, if you could think of like, let's say the astral world as like 3.5 or 4.0 if we use the, the density scales, then the, um, then this world could be moving from 3.0 to like 3.1. Right. Yeah, something's happening. And if something's that happens, happening. it means yeah. also it means a, overall, you know, we'd be seeing at, um, a, a much bigger increase of like. I I today just alone was so bizarre. I I, I mean I, this whole week has been one of the bizarrest weeks of my life. From. I told you about that guy who the, he was my 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 uh, above neighbor. He lived above me in the a kind of an attic sort of an apartment and he he jumped off about six weeks ago and supposedly he was in er in intensive care in a coma or something and i'm like well that can't be good i can't see how you're jumping 90 feet and i mean i almost oh my gosh. I, it's gonna sound bad but i like i'm like hope he died because i who wants to stay alive and be paraplegic you know yeah like so uh i was i was friendly towards him i was i wouldn't say i was friends with him i only saw him a little bit i've only been here 
less than a year, but around it's going to be around a year. But um, he would be clear a few times, but then he just, I mean, you wouldn't even believe it. It's like seeing someone who is just so quiet and so mousy and so, and he would always ask me this thing like, hey, man, why do you wear that hat? Do you got a cigarette? Can I, can I bum a cigarette? But he would speak it clearly at least. I wouldn't see this this manic insanity that at, at night, at night, and like because I I'm I'm a night person. I'm just a person who doesn't sleep them. I have like you. I just I'm I'm up doing things and then I'll crash. But I did kind of reset for a little while. Anyway, going back at night, he would just run. I mean, he, I just hear drum 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 drum. And and I guess one where he would hang out and where his TV and he had speakers, he would just blast. I could hear it. Marilyn Manson, the beat of the people, the beat of the people. And he'd go, ah, 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 ah. Oh I've never heard anything like this. When I saw the when I saw the Joker movie, I freaked out because I'm like, holy fuck, that's the dude who lives above me. And oh my gosh. I mean, he just go on and on. But but in my 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 logical mind could almost couldn't connect it because then i'd see him and he'd be like hey what's up man you know i didn't see any of that and i'm like, I, I'm like I'm right i mean it is the issue of mental illness as well but the question is if, i'm wondering if it's drug addiction or mental illness or a combination of well, both the question is if there's a if there's an ongoing pattern of people's personalities and things changing rapidly because this is what some you know clients or people I do coaching for have been telling me and others in the group have been telling me. So maybe I'll ask also Barbara and Dee, have you guys been noticing anything different? I have. Anything? Yeah. I have. Yeah, what's yeah. Yeah, so what, I've what, been what? noticing in my readings. Now, I'm not, you know I'm not a medium, but I do Akashic Record soul realignment readings and not uh, putting people back in time so they can see when they were a milkmaid in Switzerland. But just looking if to see if there's any uh any issue from past lives that's impacting them still that they haven't let go of yeah and i do most of many of my readings with parents whose children have passed and so recently i've been doing i always do quite a few readings but i've been doing some with a lot more communication from the other side during the reading mm -hmm. it's intensifying Oh, okay. Now that can be um, flashing of lights. It can be sounding like people talking. It can it can be. I think it's communication from the children. Maybe some from the people that are helping me. Uh, my my uh, loved ones in spirit. And so anyway, the it's amping up where where they want to have more clarity by me. So, then, so, so, when I was, so they're giving me more cues. Some of the sources I was reading was saying that it's going to be easier to make contact with the other side as we move from, let's just say, okay, let's say we're 3.0 and then we go up to 3.1, right? And let's say 4.0 is the quote spirit world, you know, but it's, but it really, if we're dealing with frequencies, the idea is that if you turn the knob just a little, 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 little tiny bit, then we're that much little, little, little bit closer to being on like that scale, right? And uh, if, if, if that knob gets turned just a little bit, then suddenly it's much easier to make contact, for example, with deceased people. And so that's, um, that's the idea. And then the idea is that that's going to keep happening for, you know, to an extent. It's part of the, part of like the overall scheme of changes and things happening in the world. That, that's what seems to be happening. I think a, lot, a lot of like the Edgar Casey, and there's been a lot of predictions about this type of thing. And it's kind of like, it's, it's what like a lot of people, like you know, like David Wilcox, very well-meaning, but I think I, I think he gets. A lot oh, of he's stuff going, off. he's going overboard. I get twenty emails from him a day, and I've unsubscribed ninety times. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it's like last minute, please. The light, the super light, no, ultra spectral light, <laughs> mega ultra spectral light. Oh, it's like Jesus, stop, David. <laughs> you know what? What he, you know, he's trying to, uh, you know, he, you know, he, he's talked for a long time. Like his main thing is all this ascension. I think he got. The basic premise wrong i i think what the information from the other side is trying to say is like oh yeah ascension for you is like it's gonna be a lot of manic people running around and paranormal stuff happening and with your world is still going to be a mess sorry it's not going to be like everyone shoots through the through the roof and yeah and that's the question too like this ascension thing 
It's like, yeah, okay, what about so what you, Dolores if you, you upgrade, to say? Oh, sorry, oh, go ahead. Sorry, let me D, what are you saying? Oh, I was just saying, you know, the thought about Dolores Cannon, you know, uh, uh, going through the ascension. Yeah, I was going to ask Barbara about that too, but because you just said you do past life regressions. How much? I don't do past life regressions. Well, what did you say? You help them in past lives. I'm sorry. I'm, I help them if they're it? having a problem they've carried over from a past life. For instance, if they had a situation where they thought they were at fault for some accident that happened and they so carry you, that you, all you, through with them, then that can be cleared in a way. Or if they did something, I had one person from another country who had um, in a past life interacted with people in his village and did real harm to them through these customs they had. Okay, that, so can you clarify just so I understand Yeah, the difference between say, what Dolores Cannon is doing with her, I forget the QHTTP, the quant, just so I understand, because you, you're, you're, you're helping them clear something from a past life. Right. So how are they not regressing so much to clear that thing? I'm just trying to understand the because actual I'm difference. Doing, I'm finding what the situation was when I do the reading, when I prepare the reading, I do it ahead of time. I don't do it while they're there. And then we talk about it and I, bring them the story that I've gotten and uh, they say, well, yeah, that's exactly right because that's what I'm doing all the time. I'm trying to find someone to take care of because I feel like um, that I'm responsible for people that have accidents and I have to try to rescue them and all this stuff. So, hmm. you know, it, yeah, I have it, just, sort of it rings true, but as, um, but I only Wait, take what like, rings what, true Her, the, what you, what, your experience or Dolores can what I am seeing from the past that's still impacting them. Them. But I don't do a whole bunch of- Do you see visions? How does it work with you? I just, I get the story. I sit with a blank piece of paper and I write. So it's just like kind of a channeling sort of thing? Yeah, you just kind of go. kind of thing, yeah. But it's not, is it, it's not visions, it's more just you write. It's, it's you not visions, see. but I can see the story clearly as I write it. Hmm. Interesting. And I don't, I don't believe in this ascension stuff. I don't believe in the, in all that. Um, I really can't go with that. No, I understand. I understand that's my. That was my question. Is like if you're, if this, like, like with people who are very, like, I do. I really find the law of one very interesting. But the idea that we're going for some goal of reuniting with God does not make sense to me. Like maybe for a bit, like to have the Christ consciousness mo moment where you're, where you're seeing all things and you're not, you're kind of egoless. It's a moment. It's not a place to stay. Yeah. I, right. I actually agree a lot with that. that. That's also maybe my main bone to pick with law of one. And even if law of one is legit, like who are the, I mean, maybe the extraterrestrial who, um, you know, who brought the information forward, what that was their philosophy, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's universal truth because because like you said, people can people can merge with God, but the nature seems to be that God you, you, is an individual again and wants to have experience. Yeah. So it's not, like, it's not like there's a cosmic accident that I'm Cyrus, you're Michael, Barbara's Barbara. Right, right. It's more like- you Don't you return back? Like I've had I'm moments not, where I've lost like identity, but I always return back. I don't, and I wouldn't, I don't think I'd want to stay that, that, in that <laughs> position of just being, I call it the ultimate observer. That's my word. Yeah, phrase. that's all. That, that's often been, and I'm, I'm glad you're able to share that also, like with your near death experience and all of that, because a lot of people, you know, they, they, uh, they have a difficult time like reconciling that in a sense, because some people, they have that experience and they think, well, I guess we should just annihilate our existences and go back to that state forever. But though those same people, it's like they're not applying a little bit of like philosophy or critical thinking to it. That you know, you know, this is creation itself, right? So our and that's and the fact that if that state was the original state, we changed for a reason. Right. Exactly. There you go. It's it's like that. The speaker we had on here that was talking about all the different what was it, Cyrus? All those different phases and the uh, people from the ancient times and the and these. Um, different things that people went through and it was just so it was so confusing to me and i just couldn't help thinking that it was too complicated yeah you, you know 
Do you uh, know who I'm talking about? Uh, well, I'm trying to remember which speaker that was. It was the it was he had uh, symbol he had a symbolic language for it. I don't know. It wasn't the, Ken show, was it? Was it Ken show? Was it? Yes, that's who. It was. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, Ken, yeah, Ken show comes from like a fundamentalist Buddhist spiritualist background where they mm -hmm. have all these teachings and mystical traditions, and so it gets really wonky with it. It's entertaining, but it gets wonky. Right. But, and here's but, the thing. Here's but, the yeah, thing. I mean, it's if like. You, um, I just, um, yeah, I mean, there, there, was like, there was like this source level consciousness that maybe that was the origin point, but who's saying that the origin point is where we all have to go to for, for eternity? Like we have to un undo everything that we've made. Exactly. And it, it, what it does is to force the energy into us. For instance, what he was talking about, it had to be forced into us. It's not part of a natural evolution and it's not part of our free will. And I, really I, I had an idea, I had a feeling, and it was during one of these moments where I had kind of this ultimate observer point. And the general feeling, uh, communication, download, channel, whatever you want to call it, that I got was that of a heartbeat, of all the blood going out, individuality, one thing, individuality, and, and each, each heartbeat expands further. And it's an infinite expansion. So, and then it brings back all like, imagine like a bajillion fractal, whatever, nerves, veins, experiences in every direction. That was one of the things I was trying to talk to Jurgen that I couldn't quite, Jurgen, that I couldn't quite I, I actually, verbalize. Actually, I really like that analogy. Maybe we can just remember it or we can even ask Jurgen in the future too, because that was also the realization I had just from my own like channeled sort of knowledge stuff that comes into, gets downloaded into my brain sometimes. So probably it was about like 15 years ago that I was taking those same notes that it was a, like the word would be symbiosis, symbiosis, that there's this, you know, a symbiosis between like oneness, consciousness, God, source consciousness, and, and, and individuality. Yeah. Like you almost like you can't really have one without the other because the other, right, right. It's like it, you need, you need the, that the, the outward reach and then and then each time with each if we were to say the universe is giant again this is all metaphor but if we were to say like the universe is just, just it's god's heart, heartbeat and without in our individual expressions or whatever sources heartbeat um and when we come back the the source now has so much new things that there's new channels new things to pull from new experiences to pull from new combinations new recipes new thing i mean right now there's just there's like shit that i if if, if life was static like we've been taught and in a linear direction it makes no sense do you remember i don't know if anyone remembers this does anyone i when i was a kid not a generation older than Cyrus, <laughs> but, but you know, probably, yeah, yeah, 10 years, you're right, around there. But, um, they had, for instance, like when it went in school, there was animal cards, of like every animal. Does anyone remember this? There were the cards, they came in a box, you could get a subscription, and it was like, it was almost kind of like, I don't know, they just like had zebra and told you all this. It was like a Wikipedia of animals, a picture of the car, the stats, where it was first discovered, oh. this, that. And there were thousands of them, thousands of them. And now, yeah, literally, I remember that. I remember my kids having that. Yeah, you had this? I remember my kids, yeah, going through yeah, that. I don't yeah. remember what it was called. I wish for the, the I life remember. of me I could remember and, and go search it out. Uh, I'm sure there's a youtube video with someone going here's my collection on, of these on, cards. on point michael on point so well, all right so on point meaning uh there are things right now that exist that if they had always existed you would have been taught about them there's literally now a rainbow forest of rainbow trees that i've never heard of in my entire life i've heard about it in the last couple years and it's rainbow eucalyptus trees that literally grow and they look like this acid tripping LSD mushroom, crazy rainbow and rainbow leaves. And the whole forest is like that. And then behind them is the rainbow rock mountains. What the fuck? How would you never, how would there not be like a show or a, 
you know. So you're 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 saying you think we got Mandela effect? Yeah, yeah. There's something happening. There's that because I never learned it. Like also with the Statue of Liberty, I went to Ellis Island and went up to the torch. This is clear. No one's gonna make me say, oh, maybe it was just me thinking stupid. I I went twice because my my family are all immigrants so my grandfather my mother everyone came on a boat like a three week four week trip to america went to ellis island everyone tells the same story of going to ellis island seeing the statue of america with the th- with the we take your poor this i mean they they all and when i tell them um you're wrong it's not on ellis island it's on liberty island they just just shock just like go get out of here that's that's a, yeah, fake that's a weird one too. That, that that is weird. I feel like even I've remembered Ellis mm-hmm. Island. But hey, let me just. There talk. used to be commercials. There used to be commercials like with an American Express card, and people would be in the torch. They'd show people like in the torch, and a plane would fly towards the torch, and someone would be in the torch like, "Do you know me? I'm Burt Reynolds." Yeah. I carry American Express, and I've been in the torch. Now, according to our current history right now, no one has been in that torch since 1912 or 1918 weird that- yeah i don't know much about i guess i'm not from new york so i don't remember the torch or know much but that definitely sounds like a mandela it's, it's just mind-blowing bring it it's back mind-blowing kind of wrap things up I, I did i didn't really like you know this idea about kind of like the symbiosis of you know individuality oneness you know working together because I think one of the major issues and those of us, you know, you know, all, all you guys who know my work, you know, that's always been having to deal with is the idea. I think the, when, when this spiritual philosophy goes a little bit haywire and then they think, well, you know, we have to destroy one and get to the other, you know, so we have yeah, to no, I don't, individuality I agree with that. and our individual existences and, and get back to that one, this feeling now to the exclusion, you know, of, of the other half of it. And that's that's almost like been the main kind of struggle or issue, and um, you know, but it does seem there's so many groups that seem to be focusing on that. When we get back to the one, yeah, it is so then, strange. Yeah, and then, and then you get back to the one at the expense. For what? And so the one's going to be alone again and need to split into the many again. Yeah, and then, but, it but, makes but, no it, sense. Is it, like, <laughs> is it like this time they're going to not do it? Like, okay, this time. Right, we're yeah. One. No, we've got all the information we could possibly need. No more expansion. Just we're one, and I and I and by the way, all individuality is gone. So I can't even talk to multiple reflections of myself anymore. I'm just instead of a diamond, I'm just like a, a brick of of golden. You know, I don't know. <laughs> and then, you make up your analogy. You define, get what I'm saying. Say like like eternal bliss and happiness. Like how do you even define what eternal bliss and happiness is? Yeah, That's- if you can't if you can't have more expansion, how can there be eternal bliss? It's like an orgasm that never ends. Even that would get tiring. Yeah, that doesn't sound. I think <laughs> that, that doesn't. It's not pleasurable. <laughs> Well, let me just turn it over real quick to Dee and Barbara. You guys have any last thoughts or okay, ideas? I'll mute myself. We, um... No, I was I was curious with Barbara's stream, if you remember uh, what you were well, saying. I have, to, I have to get the book where I wrote it out. But uh... encouraged by the movement that's going on and I think it's a positive movement and I don't believe in in uh, bliss and I mean bliss is fine Jurgen talks about it and there's a dimension where people that want bliss can be but <laughs> I know that my partner is certainly not in that mode because in the on the other side that she constantly talks about debating with people and learning things and challenging opinions and people challenging her opinion and and uh so there's cool. there's a lot of motivation Emotion and a lot of emotion i think well i would i would think okay. that there is bliss and joy in that like, in that yes I mean, good like but, this i enjoy this yeah. very highly this what she discussion. says is i'm free right i'm free to do uh, all the things that i love in the words okay. of the great kenny cool. loggins <laughs> <laughs> i love him <laughs> And she doesn't have any. I have, to check out, I have to check out of this hostel in an hour. I'm going to shower and get ready for the next leg of my journey. Which oh, my gosh, Iris. We can't wait to hear. Yeah, we right, can. I don't, know what the, I don't know what the hell you're doing coming back to the United States. If I were you, I would have gone back to Indonesia. 
into a nice camp. Oh, I, I what, what happened with I, the girlfriend? Is I that a, all? I had a I had a place booked in Malaysia, but Malaysia is locked down until September first, and then they probably won't Ooh. even allow Americans to come in for another six months. Uh, it's like I, that with I every just, country out here. I have a terrible oh. feeling that like like it's going to go full go Malaysia here. here. I, 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 I have a feeling what? I'm sorry, there was an echo. I, I said I have a terrible feeling it's going to go full militia, militia here. I have a terrible yeah. feeling things are going to get worse before they get better. I also have a terrible feeling that... No, I have a feeling it's good, but it, it is going to be like to yeah. the extreme ends of what we've ever seen. Yeah. And then, so. and then there'll be like, maybe like what I'm saying, this mushing will stop and maybe it'll divide. And that would be what you would call, I don't know, the harvest or the descent, like not an ascension is getting better or worse, but like I think groups of vibrations are being extremely like it. You're forced right now. You can't go on any Facebook or YouTube or this or that and say anything without being will. What vibration are you into? Who do you agree with? God damn it. Oh, fuck you. You said that you don't like masks. You're done with, I'm done with you. It's like this just it's it's this hate and the blame. polarization. Yeah, you know, polarization is it's at the most yeah. extreme it's ever been. And so I think it's almost like a filter of some sorts. Like we're being filtered and the, and like the souls are grouping into groups that would match and make sense with each other. I don't I, Yeah. Something might happen if if Randy Kramer was right because he he just keeps predicting everything that's going to happen. Now there's a second. Is that the, that's the guy with the UFO stuff you told yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Randy Kramer said, "Hey, there's going to be a second virus coming. Watch out!" And then on the news, there's now the second virus coming out of China. That there's a new viral. Yeah, number. they already started with it. Oh, it's, great. It's so ridiculous. Well, you know, you know, Carrie Cassidy is right. She had a seven-minute clip, and she was. Um, she left LA, went to England, and then she did a seven-minute clip from the airport in Turkey. And Is that the Project Camelot girl? Yeah. And so there she was in Turkey, and then they were giving her problems, and she didn't understand why. Because she didn't read anything, nothing on the internet about having a problem there. She was showing the airport that it was kind of uh, desolate. So I don't know. I don't know what she was going to do. She was with her partner. and Yeah, that's what this one. Out of Turkey. Interesting. Go hey, I got to go. I got to pack. I'm going to talk to you guys. Right. I'll leave the meeting open. But Be safe. One. Swallow a GPS device. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll see you all soon. I'll be around. I'll be, uh, like I said, Sunday. Hopefully I'll be back in USA. Unless if we don't hear from you for two months, we know you're in the mobile COVID FEMA unit. That's actually correct. Oh, <laughs> A while means that they forced me to take a test at the airport. I came up positive and was put into a Philippine isolation ward. <laughs> that, so that literally could happen. So if you don't, oh, I will. We all well, you could our... also end up on a military base and quarantined in the U.S. Or that. that we, we wouldn't hear from you either way. Yeah, that's yeah, and then you so, might have interesting reflections in there. So, so we let can us use know. our imagination. Just you know, post on the Facebook group on my behalf. Okay, bye.